everyone welcome and welcome back to my channel i'm flaminia and this is episode 18 of the ship of maharni podcast if you're new thank you so much for clicking on today's video and if you're a returning viewer thank you so much for coming back i do really appreciate it and if you're like new and coming from the last episode um i'm glad you're here and in general thank you so much for the appreciation for my last video which was uh my 2024 knitting plans uh which you know it's march oh happy spring by the way it's the first day of spring today so like as for filming like the interaction and the feedback that i got was like bigger than i imagined sometimes like creators tend to focus on like views or whatever <laughs> people commented and also i'm super grateful that uh like it never happened to me of course but um after like soon after the video uh like a couple of people mm, like messaged me on my email and they gifted me like some patterns um like some of the ones that I am planning to knit and that was so like overwhelmingly generous like I don't want to say the names because I don't know maybe they don't agree I don't know but like you know who you are and thank you so much you made you didn't make my day you made my a year and a half of uploading on YouTube worth it because I, I don't know, I can tell we're like building something over here that like you guys appreciate what I do and you like watching what I do somehow and I don't know, that's just really sweet and I really appreciate it, thank you. So yeah, as you can see, um, I'm not in the best shape today, uh, this is um one of my boyfriend's shirt that he left here and i slept in it and i just didn't feel like taking it off and also i'm not wearing makeup today and you can see i'm pretty like swollen around my eyes but you know just that's just the reality of things and i know i don't look the greatest but at the same time i was like you know we're all friends here so why not just sit here and talk with each other about what we love which is knitting so yeah bear with me thank you so much um i'm still in my pajamas and yes if you were wondering all this time this is the basket of things i have to show you and look how cute this is like wait so I have for you a finished object, another finished object, a new whip, another new whip, and yeah, uh, but basically I, another finished object, I asked my mom for like one of her baskets to put my excavation blanket in, and look how pretty this looks, like I really hope that, um, like using this method to Put it because it was going to it was just way too big to actually use a project bag and like enjoy using a project bag you know when it's like just too big and every time you pull it out it's a mess and every time you have to put it back in it's a mess all of that so i have my blanket and then underneath all the yarns which i'm running out of them again because every row is just so big that i'm using most of my scraps so um yes current situation and yeah i just wanted to show you because it's cute it's really nice and if you were wondering i am wearing my second iteration of the marseille sweater which i finished this year and i can reconfirm what i said when i talked about this when it was finished I love this so much. I still have to put an elastic into the neckband, which I think that like at this point is really necessary, but whatever. Um, you know, it's a testament on how much I wear it and how comfy it is. I, 
I wear it even if you know the color looks like this. But yeah, uh, it has started to peel a little bit. But yeah, the yarn that I used was a yarn that I mm, repurposed from a knitted skirt that my mom had in her closet, which was like commercially made, commercially produced, and industrially produced. Which one of the two is it? I don't know. But yeah, it's just very lightweight and very comfy and I love black, so it's just a win-win situation. Would really recommend knitting this pattern. Yes, of course, it's like modified because it doesn't have stripes. And yeah, if you want to like see more in detail info about this and the modifications that I made, you can either go look at my Ravelry project page or just take a look at my latest podcast episode. Was it the latest? Oh my gosh, yeah, so much time has passed. I'm sorry. Okay, I think we can get on with the finished object section. Just such a mess. So, I'm not wearing this because I, you know, I just felt like wearing my this shirt and just covering myself up in a comfy sweater. But I finished my step-by-step -step cardigan test knit for um, Handmade by Florence. This is a, as you can see, like a basic raglan cardigan with just one by one weaving details and a lovely double knitted bottom band attached to it. If you're familiar with Florence's step-by-step -step sweater, this is like the cardigan version of it and so like this will be a free pattern with um a step-by-step -step, like youtube video attached to it and yes this is really lovely and so what i used yes i used a dk weight yarn this pattern calls for like a 16 stitch gauge but I just knitted uh, like a looser fabric with a smaller, like a thinner yarn, if it makes sense. I used a uh, Jobs Soft Tweed in this like mossy military green color. And it has like a brown, gray, um, like bluish, yellowish, uh, like tweedy bits in it. I don't think the camera is loving this lighting at the moment. <laughs> because it's, you know, it's really sunny over here, you can see. And I just really like this. So this is, uh, of course, reading to, written to be as beginner friendly as possible. And it actually is, I have to say, Florence did a really good job. And the, like the only, maybe more advanced technique um, is the double knitted bottom band but I feel like it is really worth it and it looks super, super good. I knitted the size C, which I think was, you know, I'm usually in between sizes. So I think it's like the bigger size. You know, I'm, I'm in between a B and a C and I needed the C. So it has a bit more positive ease than, you know, if you're not in between sizes and you don't go for a size up. But I think it looks really, 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 really nice. All the testers have done an amazing job. So I really encourage you like um, looking at the um, like Instagram, the hashtag on Instagram and the um, like Florence just sent the like Ravelry tester, tester code. So maybe I think projects on Ravelry can look at now and it just looks really nice and I cropped it by I think like four centimeters or something around that and it looks really nice with dresses I've taken like finished object pictures with a white flowy dress and I adored it and I also wore it out with that same um, like white dress with uh, cowboy boots and I felt like the coolest person in the entire universe so yes the buttons are just 
like matter of mother of pearl this white buttons and what else so yeah even if like you can see the fabric is maybe a bit looser than what you'd get with the recommended gauge but it like it's not see-through at all i'm very very surprised so you can definitely use this yarn to knit this pattern i feel like really nice the only problem i had is not like a pattern problem it's a me problem but you know it's very interesting so i'll share it with you um you know how with a double knitted bottom band uh, the gauge of the row gauge of the bottom band needs to be the same as the row gauge of your like main fabric stock net fabric in this case basically i've noticed that my one by one rib row gauge was smaller than smaller yes i think there were more rows either way uh then you know my bottom band and then my regular thing so if the row gauge is different you can kind of get that the bottom band like flares out or just cinches in a little and basically what is happening that in the stocking net is totally fine but in the ribbing like maybe you know i've just i've just buttoned it but you can see how it is like stretching in this direction but like everything else is fine i think it's because like the button uh, the the ribbing gauge is smaller than the stockinette one and so smaller than the bottom band one so it is kind of flaring out a little bit but just at the bottom you know that was really curious like if it never happened to me and I don't even know like how I could have like solved the problem. Like maybe just using a smaller needle size still here and then use, you know, the recommended one. But then I'm like wondering, do you see it if I change needle size? I don't know, that could be an idea. I thought about it. But then I was like, yeah, no, I don't want it to look different, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yes, here it is. You, yeah, you can see it is like flaring a little bit at the bottom, but I think it, re it looks really nice. Yesterday evening, Florence sent the, um, what's it called? The feedback, f feedback form. And yeah, sorry, as this is like a loser gauge, this used like no yarn at all like i still have half of the quantity i had of this yarn left so like i don't know how many balls and how many grams specifically but maybe i'll wait it and see so i can you know put it on the screen and i think it's enough for this so let's go on with the second finish object which is the Ooh, brioche scarf chunky by Garno slit uh, in the last episode I just I think I was just halfway then like in a day I finished <laughs> the other section because I don't know I feel like I'm not the only one but when you decrease it's like it goes by so fast and it's just so much more enjoyable so this is an all over brioche stitch uh, like croissant shape shawl, uh, scarf, pardon, scarf, and it is really long. I made, uh, I think, the biggest size. There are, I think, two sizes, and I think I made the bigger one. And yeah, look at the color, it's really pretty. And I made it to match a hat that I've knitted, and I am participating in two knit alongs with these two items like look how pretty it is under the sunlight pretty um i'm participating in the winter set cal with these two and in the fluffy scarf knit along with this one so double dip which is really nice and the brioche looks really really squishy and this was so addicting to knit like, I think I'm less scared about brioche now. This was my first project using this stitch. 
and yes it can be intimidating but like the more you do it the more comfortable you get and the more you like understand the anatomy of the stitch i'm still not a master of brioche for sure but i don't know it is just really fun and like this is really potato chippy because you just you just want to get to the next increase and like they look so nice the increases in brioche so like you cannot wait to make more and like see it grow and yes you also decrease on the other side so yes i loved knitting on this and i really want to make the agonite cardigan by petite knit now so we have to see about that when we'll make it if we'll make it whatever but like usually um i think people style it like like you just wrap it around oh my gosh and you tie it and it's just the comfiest thing ever and it just looks very squishy squishy just the keyword and then without trying it on the hat really really pretty set and yeah i don't know what else to say about this the yarn was something i had in stash and i was planning about like using it all but uh like i didn't want the scarf to be too excessively big I'm, i just thought like uh, i think the this is two meters long like i don't need a scarf that is longer than that like to be honest so i'll see what to make with the leftovers i'll maybe add it into the blanket which could be a genius idea or maybe just make another like pair of like fingerless fingerless gloves could be nice like to just complete the set would be nice i don't know but yeah i still have some left a decent amount but yeah this is really really nice and definitely in my color palette love it um did i say yes the pattern is super super clear i highly recommend if it's like your first brioche project because you know at the start when you're learning uh sometimes i feel like if you just need a rectangular scarf in a new stitch and you're getting like you still have to get used to the stitch pattern it it can go really slow with the start so um, you don't have very many stitches so when you're slower at doing the stitch you like you have less stitches so it can go by faster and when you start getting used to like the patterning you can like have more fabric and still it doesn't go as slowly because it's like you've gotten used to it if it makes sense i really like this shape of of scarf and also because you know you can tie it and so that means i mean you can also you know tie it but you know i love having the option to tie it because i feel like you know just scarf they just fall off of me whenever I wear them and also the problem is that like I really nice the fact like, I really nice what the heck was that it's really nice that you know at the ends you know your scarf just dangles so that is a bit of a waste of fabric you know just stay with me you know if just if the sides of your scarf are just meant to drape then it makes sense that you can like remove a little bit of fabric from it so i like the pointiness of it like both for like yarn management purposes and also for the look i really enjoyed it so because i really enjoyed my sophie shawl and yes that's something like it's similar similar enough so yes then uh, i think i've showed you in my last podcast that I started um, a pair of Sunday socks by Petite Knit and I finished one. It looks yes, silly and long. It's a bit too long, to be honest. It's like, it should maybe be like this long, but whatever, I'm not unraveling that. Uh, this is the sock yarn that I've used for my first pair of socks, which were just matted and super tight. And they were like a pair of shorty socks. So just imagine that with, um you know i knitted this is an iron weight yarn and i knitted it on 2.5 millimeter needles 
so just imagine how dense that was and how much yarn it took i think the yarn that i unraveled from those socks like i think i it took me like till here of the socks so all of this is knitted with that amount of yarn and like it just it just so shows that like when you knit on a larger gauge like the meterage of your yarn just stretches a lot but yeah this is my first one i just used it as like um a project to knit like mindlessly when maybe i was at uni and i was getting bored of the lecture or when i was um uh, in the in the bus getting there or when I was at the cinema, I knit like till here during Dune 2 and yes, I want to watch it with one of my friends and yeah, let me sh put it on. If you've been here for like the whole sock saga, you remember that I knitted a pair of like mohair socks and it was a total fail and yes, you know, I just have huge calves and like um, ankles so i struggle knitting socks i know you really enjoy my pajama bottoms uh but basically yeah it they are still tight a little bit over here but yeah um yeah i don't know what i'm doing uh they fit great and they're comfy and yes i don't know if i will venture again in like plain stocking at socks I'll maybe try to knit uh, three by one socks, something like that. But just two by two are just very, uh, very versatile and, you know, very stretchy, we know. So, yeah, I think that for me, for now, we're good with the chunky rib socks. I hope I won't get second sock syndrome, but I don't think I will because I'm like not rushing anyway to finish them. So yes, I think we can move on to the whips. They are very exciting in my opinion. Uh, I tested on two new things and these are the only things I worked on. My Arctic light sweater, guys, it's gorgeous, but I'm hitting a little bit of a, like a dead, Point. I don't know if that's how you say it, but basically I'm just, mm, my motivation is just gone for it because it's just extremely heavy. It's super heavy, that damn sweater. It's very, very heavy. And I'm like, like I consider frogging it yesterday, but I was like, are you crazy? You put so much work into this. So, um, and like the problem is that like, I don't have problems if I just want to frog a project and just use the yarn to knit something different. But if the project was time consuming and I frog it to re-knit it, I don't know if I have the strength and the motivation to frog something that big and just re-knit re it again. So yeah, but maybe like in, how's it called in in hindsight the um, maybe i should have just because basically i'm using a sport weight held double to knit that but maybe holding that sport weight with like uh either a fingering or a lace would have been a little better but that was the yarn that i had in stash so yeah but i don't have enough of it anyway so uh yeah I don't know, I will maybe like block it just so that maybe seeing it blocked I will be more motivated to knit on it. That's just a thought, but yeah, I'm just like, I know I should finish that, but I'm not feeling it at the moment and I'm just thinking about it. Either way, um, if you've seen again my latest video with my 2024 plans, uh, you may be, I don't think you do, but you can maybe recognize this, which is not a lot, but this is the back panel of the Amy Sleepover by Sam Miss Garn. This pattern was one of the ones that were gifted to me by one of you, so thank you so much if you're watching. And 
and also like somebody I think yeah like they sent me the their online copy of the knitting for olive book like guys that is so generous what the hell thank you so much by the way i'm crying but i won't start i'm on my period okay if don't mind me if i'm crying um this is the back of the amy sleepover and i'm knitting it with drops of packa um i'm a bit uh like unsure about like the tension doesn't look super great on this if you can see and it also looks a bit see-through but also you know when you can see through it like this but then when you put it next to skin you don't see through it actually and yeah but I'm forcing myself to knit more loosely so I guess that's what you get the pattern suggests like a sport weight yarn but the sport weight yarn in question is made with a fingering and a lace mohair. And uh, yeah, on the 3.5 millimeter needles. But I just went up a needle size. I'm using 4 millimeter needles because I am a tight knitter anyway. So I know I, I swatched with 3.5, but I wasn't on gauge. And like, like this, I'm still not on gauge but uh it's closer at least so and this is also like i didn't know it but like it makes sense because it's really really easy to adjust but it's a one size pattern so i was like oh yeah maybe i should go up a size and then i look at the pattern and there are no sizes i'm like oh get it now <laughs> but yeah like if you adjust if you just take the like width measurement and you scale it down or up um like based on what yarn you're using and on your gauge i think that you could get away with using whatever yarn you want with this project so i could have just used 3.5 millimeter needles and put a little bit more stitches on that but yeah i don't know just wanted it to be a little bit more lightweight and drapey and i hope that will look good because this has like a ties and a turtleneck so i hope it won't be too floppy and but yeah with that pattern, I don't know if I want it structured or if I want it drapey. But yeah, I'm just... Because this is like 100% of Paca, so it's decently drapey. But yeah, I think I still have to work on it a little more to understand and maybe block it halfway, I don't know. Um, but like for now, it's just a rectangle with this like garter stitch detail on the side. And I actually never noticed about this thing so when i read the pattern i was like what is it making me do right now it was guard stitch and but i think it looks nice like it's a nice design feature to just elevate something that could have easily been just plain stuck in it and yeah very nice i think and yeah i will update up uh, I will update you when I have more progress on this. So yes, and this is my main whip at the moment. Like to be fair, these last couple of days I've been working on my blanket a little bit and not very much on this and also on my sock and not very much on this, but I stopped working on it for a reason. And yes, again, if you've seen my plans, you've seen it started. But also if you've watched like my past episodes, you're familiar with the yarn, which was an acquisition or a gift, depending on how you see it. Uh, yes. Okay. Oh my gosh. The beauty. Ta-da. I started and split for sleeves and worked on the body of of the season sweater by Osera, which is a raglan uh, all over half fisherman's rib crew neck uh, sweater i'm knitting with the recommended yarn which i think it's very rare for me i never use the recommended yarns but it was gifted to me by my lovely boyfriend so uh yes um he he gifted me the recommended yarn because that what was 
listed in the pattern. And I'm using Istex Plorulupi in shade 2022. And I think it's called like Blues Blue, something like that. And I'm holding it together with, yeah, a l -l 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 Le Petit Silk Mohair by Biche Bouche, which is actually quite a nice mohair. Like, I'm very sensitive to mohair and wool, and so to this garment in general, I'm very sensitive to. But, um, like, I can feel the difference, like, between this and the drops one. Like, this is this is for sure nicer. But yeah, this is like only the second mohair that I use. So like, I'm not the one to ask for like, which mohair do you like? Because I don't like them usually. Um, but yeah, you cast on at the neck and you have two options, either like a double for the color or just a single layered. I never know how to say like single layered color, just strip of fabric as color i don't know and yeah i chose the second one as you can see it's not double folder it's just one layer of fabric again let's say that again and i use tubular cast on which doesn't look the super neatest but i'm happy enough with you know like this being unspun and like just a new experience so um yeah i think it looks decent enough and yeah you need the ribbing then you need short rows which i don't know i just really like the shape of them it gives a really nice shape to the color in the front which i don't know i like a lot and but yeah they were kind of you kind of had to look at the pattern a lot for them because every time they change because yeah, every time, yeah, it changes every time, so you, you gotta look carefully. Uh, what I like about this pattern is that, like, the cast-on edges for, like, most sizes is, like, the same. Or, like, for extra small, small, medium, is the same. So if you're, like, if you haven't still decided which size you prefer, you can just start knitting it and then, like, see how it fits and uh, just decide later on so yes that's what i did actually and also one of you suggested it i think i went for a size medium because when i tried it on when the like as per size small which is the one i should knit as per size small i reached the point where the yoke was finished and it was kind of short and i don't want this like scratchy fabric to be like up in my armpits or something like that and i know that half fisherman's rib like i don't know if it's if in this yarn it works like that but in half fisherman's rib usually what i've heard is that it stretches a decent amount in length with blocking so i was like maybe like the yoke is gonna get a bit deeper but i didn't want to risk it i didn't want to block it so yes uh i just went for a size medium and i think it looks decent enough like even if it grows i'm happy with it honestly so yeah and i stopped at this specific point because that's how far one plate of plot de loopy gets you like that's insane it's like the color the whole yoke and like 10 centimeters ish on the body it's like so much and i think that yeah as like when you knit a fisherman's rib for one v that you see you knit two rows so i think it like eats up yarn more more like fa faster than like if you just knit stockinette so and like this weights nothing basically it's just so lightweight and you know that's that would like clicked the it's called the the arctic light sweater thing about the weight how heavy it is like it doesn't have to be that heavy but for the yarn choice that i made it is so i'm not sure about that but i don't want to frog it to remake it like either i frog it and i don't make it ever again or i just suck it up and finish it i think the second one 
like could be better because I feel like that if I don't wear it once I finished it will I would feel less guilty to frog it once it's finished if it makes sense you're like well you're putting so much work in it and then you don't wear it so why is that um yeah I don't know I told you I prefer like giving it a try and then if it doesn't work unraveling it then just never know if it likes if it will work and if i just think that things that are repairable but then they are and then it's not as as bad as i thought i don't know i'm just very weird honestly and yes i'm just uh i'm also knitting a uh, knitting uh recording a project vlog knitting this because i don't know it's just a really new experience overall i'm using mohair i'm using unspun and i am a, quite a tight knitter so i was like how is this going to work so yeah uh stay tuned for that i don't know when i will finish this sweater but when i'll finish the sweater i'll edit the vlog and then it will be up to you for watch to watch and yes um i at the start I missed the couple of like mohair strands and you can really see them when you're like looking at it from like horizontally and but yeah it's fine like I don't think I did miss a lot of mohair strands now like recently no because like um, I didn't want to unravel uh, to pick them back up at the start because I was like oh this is this is new I don't know what to do so um, like now I feel more confident with this stitch pattern and it's also like knitting with this yarn, even if it goes slowly, it's like quite meditative. Like I thought it would be like nerve wracking because it would like break all the time, but it just bre it just broke two times. And it was because like not me knitting with it, but me pulling from the skein. And I was like, maybe I didn't want to like unravel the yarn from the plate very I don't know slowly and delicately so i just pulled the yarn and it broke but you know um that was the only thing so i'm very surprised on how sturdy it is but i know that like unspun yarns every unspun yarn is different and then pluto lopi is one of the like sturdiest yarn but yeah um if you're scared that, that this is gonna break in like two seconds uh also like holding with mohair really 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 helps like this is a lifesaver but yeah, trust me, it doesn't. And it's not as bad as you as you think. So yeah, knitting a size medium, there are short rows. I'm loving this project. I think that now that I finished the first plate of Plotaloopy, I'll maybe pick up one of the sleeves and see how it goes. But yeah, enjoyable, loving this. Really, really like it. And the, like the fabric is just like very fluffy and it has like the the color of the mohair and the color of the plotolopi yarn they are a bit different but even like the plotolopi in itself it is kind of heathered so i don't know just the fabric is a bit heathered it has some cute depth to it so i don't know surprisingly enough this is like my favorite project at for the time being honestly so loving loving yeah is this it okay yeah i think it's it and i like how we're like going back to the normal amount of projects to talk about in a podcast episode because i really want to do a podcast recommendation today uh, if you're new i used to always do that like it's been a i don't know three or four episodes maybe that i didn't do any podcast recommendation just because I had so much, so many things to talk about and I didn't have enough time, like, you know. But today's podcast recommendation is uh, like a podcast made by, like, there are two people running the podcast and it is the Two Pearls in a Pot channel. Like, firstly, the name is so cute, okay? And these, uh, like, this podcast is run by two girls they're from melbourne australia so like it's also cool to see like somebody from the um, other hemisphere because like it is kind of confusing for my little brain 
to see someone like yeah it's just july it's so cold and i'm like how is it cold in july <laughs> but either way like i think i'm not the only one but yeah it's like it's nice to see different projects even if you know in the norm in the northern hemisphere where we just see like everyone like how it should be like knitting jumpers in the winter and maybe summer tops in the summer but like for them the seasons are like uh, the other way around so you get a little bit of both and which is really nice and the personality of those two girls like let me just call them by name i think um like i don't think i've basically watched um every single episode of them but i was like yeah there are so many like i don't know why i thought there were so many yeah there are so many episodes so like I'll just watch them and like they will never end and then yesterday I was like scrolling and I I reached the first one because of course I didn't start from the first one I just went to the last one to you know go in you know going back I was like what the hell what am I supposed to watch now so I started again <laughs> from like their latest podcast and like all of those videos because they're just like the antidote like when you're feeling down and you watch their videos i don't know they're like so funny and so genuine and i love like their 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 like relationship and how they how they are together yeah and i still haven't said the name uh they're one of them is called sarah and one of them is called Paige, and i don't know they just they're just they have very similar personalities but at the same time like completely different and i love that i love that so like really i haven't been like very good like mentally and emotionally this <coughs> these last couple of days uh so they've just been a tiramisu in my life so and also i added sarah I don't know why I just heard yes because I want to knit the Cargill sweater so I added Sarah like as a friend on Ravelry and she added me as well so I was like oh my god <laughs> and yeah uh, fangirling moment but yeah I really recommend like heading to their channel which I'll link down below they use very interesting yarn and of course yarn which is not available to me but they also use like I like it cracks me up that of course like they live in australia so uh, every time they have to order from like i if i want i can order from like knitting directly for from like knitting for olive and the shipping is not like outrageously expensive but like imagine just having to buy a sweater quantity from australia from knitting for olive and like having to spend i don't know how much on shipping so they are like in these uh facebook based what facebook groups or like knitting groups where you know they just do a massive order just to like divide the shipping or maybe just get free shipping i don't know if there is free shipping but either way it's just like they're the anecdotes that they that they tell in the podcast are just so good and so funny so go check them out and yes, I also like thank you if you're stick. I, I feel like I'm a little bit brain fog today, but either way, thank you so much for sticking to this part. I still have one thing to talk about. If you're like a regular viewer, you know I don't buy a lot of yarn because I cannot afford buying a lot of yarn. But at the same time, uh, I'm getting better at like. Uh, I'm not getting better, I'm absolutely not getting better, but I want to get better at, at like treating myself with some yarn that I want every once in a while. And I really want to order um, some yarn. I want, like if you follow me on Instagram, and if you don't, I suggest you doing that if you want, and you're like interested in in like helping me making decisions. That's very, very helpful and I would really appreciate it. But if you don't want to, it's totally fine. Uh, but yeah, basically I just made a Instagram story and like a pool because I really want to knit the Cargill sweater. Oh, because I haven't, yeah, I haven't said it on the podcast. But yeah, if you haven't seen my last video, I like, I dropped the bomb. Basically I said that 
uh i think if everything goes well i'll be spending like six months in like with the erasmus program in edinburgh <laughs> so yes like for the university exchange and i'm super happy and excited and even terrified because like there's so much so much to organize but either way um you know i was like i was like 99 percent sure that i wasn't going to get in because there were like two spots and i was like why me you know so i i was like if they if i get in i will need like i have to need something for the occasion so um, i was like what should i need for the occasion what like what's something that reminds me of edinburgh and, and i was like yeah i don't really know but to be honest the first thing that comes to my mind when i think of edinburgh is the crea Bea. so i was like i'm needing something the crea Bea. and i was like undecided among the cargill sweater or the Lanark sweater because I'm like in the my half fisherman's brig brioche um, moment, I think. So I was like, I decided from these two, and again, one of you uh, gifted me the Carl Gill sweater pattern from Ravelry, and I'm like so, so in awe. So I was like, I have to use that, I will make that. So, but I was like, you know, it's a beautiful sweater, and I want to get it right. And I was like the um, Sarah from the Two Pearls in a Pot podcast. Her Cargill that she made was in this like sagey green color. And like it suited, it's, that color suits her so much. And like she also used a mohair. Uh, so I don't know, it, it just gave ethereal vibes, okay? So I was like, yeah, maybe I should use that color as well because yeah, I wanted it with that color more. But at the same time, my favorite things knitwear is coming out with a um, sweater number 29, which is like a sweater number 15, but saddle shoulder version, which I'm like in love with. And I have always dreamed of um dusty already took favorite f well, sweater number 15 so i was like maybe i should use like a sage green for that and i don't want you know two sweaters to have to be in the same color so please if you have an opinion on this help me in the comments or text me like wherever but let me know somehow if you'd have the time to knit the cargill sweater and you'd want to knit the cargill sweater and you had a and you'd, oh my gosh, that's such a big wasp. Um, and you'd have all the, like, the yarn choice that you would have. What color would you need a, the Cargill sweater in? What color would you use? I don't know. I was thinking maybe either, uh, like, a chocolatey brown, like uh, one of the copy dolls did, or, like, just oatmeal-y white color. Maybe a gray, but I don't know about a gray. Let me think. Like a gray could be nice. I'll be honest. A gray could also be nice. And maybe like something pastel -y. I was, I'm thinking maybe, um, yeah, light pink or maybe light blue or lilac. But at the same time, I, I also have other projects that I want to use those colors for. Uh, so yeah, I'm just, I have the, like, I have the, the order for the yarn that I want to buy just on the, on my computer, like, just always open on my desktop, and I'm just very undecided. So yeah, please let me know, like, if you'd, if you'd knit a Cargill sweater, which color would you use? Yeah, I think that's all. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode, even though I, I feel, yeah, I'm a bit brain fogged today, but I hope it was enjoyable either way. And if you'd want to stick around, maybe consider subscribing so you'd get notified when like a new video come up. And I hope everything you're needing on is a success. And I really hope you're happy and that life is being kind to you right now. And I really hope I'll see you next time. And till then, bye.
Tinggalin kakak di sebelah.